All right. So um, I do want to talk about um, some more Disney stuff. Well, wow. You know, th- mm-hmm. this is a good segue. And um, this comes to us from uh, The Hollywood Reporter. It says, Bob Iger reflects on Disney's streaming launch. We invested too much. Studio boss talked about his turnaround strategy to boost audience engagement and manage traditional TV and digital assets uh, seamlessly. So um, do you agree, Alan, with, with that he can turn it around? That he can yeah. turn it around? Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, he's he lost a lot of goodwill. That's the problem. Um, when when he says they invested too much, were we invested too much? Yeah. Uh, Ahsoka shouldn't have cost you know hundred million dollars. Uh, that's that's way too much for a television series, especially for what was it eight eight to twelve episodes. Um, yeah, so it was like eight or and, something. Yeah. But but the the other thing is is that uh, you could have if they were good, you could at least hung your hat on that. And everything that they had put out uh, was just bad. Um, from from what it, everyone's saying, I think X Men ninety seven is the only good thing Disney is, Disney Plus has put out. Yeah. Okay. So rating is enabled. Thank you, Greg. Thank th- thank you so much yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah. So um, the thing is, uh, I I can't. I, I'm not going to say where I work, but uh, we had a meeting <laughs> with uh, with Marvel, and mm-hmm. uh, and they said that they. We asked what's going on with Marvel, and they said that mm-hmm. it's we oversaturated the market. That's mm-hmm. that was their response. So we're like, okay, so what are you gonna do? We're gonna unsaturate the market. Yeah, we're like, gonna desaturate the market. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, all right, oh, cool, cool, all right, cool. And um, you know, like uh, I, you know, I, I think the first thing is like, uh, you know, only having one major blockbuster this year, and then having. Mm-hmm agatha renamed like 20 different thousand times so uh but yeah i like i and i do ask the chat and i ask them uh, you know and i ask gray to and our guests um can marvel be saved you know when gary was on i we asked him the same question can marvel yeah be saved? he's like i think he he said yes but yes it has to be done now mm-hmm. right and we say how what about star wars he said absolutely not that thing's no dead. so so you don't think that Marvel could be safe? So so it so it feels like we're blackpilled well, when it comes down to look, uh, being saved. I mean, I'll say this: I think the only way Marvel can be sa- saved is you clean house, clean house, clean house. Start start over again. You know, uh, start with the Fantastic Four, uh, move to X Men, and and build a new universe from that. Uh, but yeah. but the people in charge and the people they're hiring and the people who are writing and directing and acting uh is just they're going in the wrong direction you know um fox or or the uh the deadpool movie is going to be a fluke because they're they're not going to give the current the current leadership is not going to give uh a director the the leeway and the freedom that ryan reynolds has yeah that is true yeah and and i i do i do agree i i think but i have a feeling like let's say Okay. Um. Before I finish my thought, do you think it's going to make a billion dollars? Oh, could it? it definitely has the potential to. I mean, it, it has to. It can't. It has to be a better movie than Deadpool two. It has to knock it out of the park uh, to to reach yeah. a billion. But yeah. I think it will do. Uh, you know, I think it will do six hundred million uh, minimum. Yeah, I, I, think, I think so. I I I can see it like hitting eight maybe like 865 around there but like mm-hmm. if it does hit it i have a feeling that disney's like see where this is all we need to do and then they and then they sort of revert back to like what they did yeah, like, yeah, like you said, yeah. it's gonna yeah. be a flu well, and- again what they did was they gave freedom to the creators to the uh to the director to the writer to ryan reynolds they gave him freedom there's no no inkling that they're gonna give freedom like that to anyone else yeah all right, let's see what he has to say. Is it, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger gave a Mia Coppola for big losses incurred while launching streaming platforms like Disney Plus during an investor conference appearance on Wednesday. As we got into the streaming business in a very, very aggressive way, we tried to tell too many stories. Basically, we invested too much way ahead of possible returns. It's what led to streaming ending up as a $4 billion loss, said Iger. Uh, four billion. That's that's insane. We yeah. thought that, that that that's an insane amount of money. Yeah, and that's lost. just Disney Plus. Talk, talk about the movies uh, that they put. Yes. Yeah. So, so, how how many movies 
that Marvel come out with last year that made a billion dollars? Is that none? None, yeah. They had three movies last year. Um, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy did the best with, I believe, 800. It's either 600 or 800 million. Uh, Marvels it, and Ant Man, uh, I believe they may have cracked 200 million. Yeah. Yeah. But, and but and what are you, according yeah, to Valiant, Re Valiant Renegade recently, and it's like, a couple of weeks ago, he he made the analysis that Guardians actually lost money. I, I forgot the breakdown of it, but it actually lost money, contrary to what we think. But I, I need to go back to that video, but it's actually, yeah. they, actually lost, they actually lost money to that. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure how he got there, uh, got to that uh, conclusion, but uh, I wouldn't doubt it. But, I mean, it, it just goes to show the, the, the uh, inflated budgets that these films are getting. And even that James Gunn, I mean, you know, he... You know, where did all that money go? I, what what did they spend it on? Um, you know, certainly, you know, we could talk about the DEI grift that's going on. Um, <laughs> you, know, you heard that story of that that one woman who who uh, grifted millions out of Facebook and Nike. <laughs> Wait, what? what? Oh, you didn't hear about that one? No. So no. So this so this DEI consultant uh, was hired by Facebook. And uh, she was charging millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars for, for uh, Juneteenth events and stuff like that. Um, but these events never happened. Uh, she, was, she was pocketing the money. And then wow. when they let her go, she went to Nike and did the exact same thing. <laughs> and, what? Um, yeah. And uh, so she was, she was, you know, she was collecting money. And uh, no way. Yeah. And, and she was just, high, you know. And, and she could hide behind racism to to not get uh, and not get caught, but then she ultimately got caught. You know, uh, when you when you uh, steal twenty billion uh, twenty million dollars from a company, um, they they want receipts. <laughs> yeah, how did they how did they not check if the actual event happened? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, well, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna argue. <laughs> and that's just the thing that's that's this talk of race that that's been so infuriating over the last few years um the, the that you can hide behind your your skin color and uh, you can demand things you know that's i mean like that's not how i grew up you know and, <laughs> you know growing up i mean growing up in an all-white community um all i knew is i just, i had to prove myself better than everyone else um and and it wasn't Honestly, and it, and it wasn't, there was no chip on my shoulder. Uh, in fact, trying to be better than everyone else made me a better person and made me uh, the person I am today. So I don't, I, I don't blame anyone. Me. I have no hard feelings. You know, white people are kind of. I was going to cool. say, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, wait, the, wait, you, you wanted to be better than everyone. So it wasn't because of your strict parents or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, my parents were, compared to other parents that I know, I know strict parents. My parents were, uh, were great. Um, but I, I can tell you, we had the discussion of, because um, when I, in my sophomore year of college, it was like, I think I want to go into broadcasting. And, uh, and that was a very long and, uh, and frustrating conversation with my parents. Because <laughs> uh, they was like, no, no, you're, uh, we're paying for your degree. <laughs> go into business. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> You know, as, I mean, I did that. My, my bachelor's degree was my parents' degree. Uh, my master's degree was my degree. That's the one I paid for. That's mm -hmm. the one I wanted. Hell yeah. 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 And then nice. um, and then in everything else I do, like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever, uh, oh, did we get the raid? Yeah, we, we got, got the raid. raid. Yeah, we got Wicked raided. Holy crap. Yo, what's going on, Raiders? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah X-ray girl says raid. Oh, yo, what's going on? Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much, Wicked. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll set how, how we'll set works. the yeah the the alarms in the future for okay. YouTube <laughs> YouTube raids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know I've you know I'm I say this because I'm old enough to have you know I've been the only Asian in things, and uh, I've never I, you know I, I think I just uh, because of my upbringing I just never thought about it that way. You know you just you you're you know you know you have to kind of prove yourself in any any situation you're in. And that's what yeah. I had. Yeah, I just had to prove myself. You know, yeah. Sometimes like, I like, failed, and that was okay. You know? So now, so did you did you fail as hard as I did when because I failed, I failed algebra <laughs> in high, in freshman year of high, high school, 
and then and then they they sent me to geometry anyways which is the one the the, the, the you know the math yeah. after that and i failed that because i wasn't ready for it so i basically <laughs> had to take algebra two times and so when by the time i was a junior i had to take algebra with a bunch of like underclassmen <laughs> and i felt so embarrassed <laughs> oh, i gotta tell you your your sister my daughter um she's been having trouble with with math and uh oh, and this year it was like oh you know i uh you know i she hadn't she had to skip class a couple of days and she got into the quiz got a got a 90 on the quiz and i go yeah you're asian that's uh <laughs> but apparently you're not no <laughs> no no i so i i had uh <clears throat> i had different priorities in uh in high school i was trying to uh you know get a girlfriend and and so i didn't <laughs> care at all about grades and uh but yeah it was uh it's definitely cool though but like it's uh i i i think when it comes down to just like you you are basically your own like you you are basically the, the own, your own reason why you fail at a lot of things mm -hmm. right? because you give up and i i think once i started trying like i'm like oh it's actually math is actually really easy <laughs> right like yes. that boy, <laughs> like it's actually really easy it makes sense you know like and, and you yeah. can't go wrong with it and it's, yeah, it's we are like genetically it's geared toward getting math <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> math is very good we good at math <laughs> yo wicked says hi yo, yo wicked thank you so much for the raid thank you thank you thank you thanks wicked. Yeah, thank you thank you but um but yeah when but when it comes to this one i guess bob Iger is not good at math because he lost four billion dollars <laughs> that, that's just for streaming. that's true Oh, yeah. let's see. Iger addressed uh, a falling out with his hand-picked successor, former uh, Disney CEO Bob Chapek, whose tenure he called out for a lavish and misplaced content spending. It was clear to me that our structure was not working because we were removing accountability from those that were basically investing the most capital. Sorry. Yeah. Investing the most capital was a mistake, he argued. Uh, yeah. I, I, th I think the fact that they fired him on a weekend. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's nightmare. pretty ironic. He says that we removed accountability, but <laughs> he he keeps doing that constantly ever I since know. he came back. Well, here here's a question: um, What if what if it was good? What if Wandavision was good? What if uh, Moon Knight was good? What if Falcon and the Winter Soldier was good? You know, what if what if She Hulk was good? You know, I, I the, the discussion would be very different because we we would not be talking about a massive loss. We'd, we'd probably be talking about a minor loss, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, the, the fact that because of the content they were putting out and because of how uh, ostensibly bad everything was, they lost uh, subscribers. You know, I, I, you know, people who are actively uh, unsubscribing from from Disney Plus. Um, I, I heard it recently where uh, it's, you know, it's it's harder to gain someone you lost back than it is to gain someone new, uh, a new customer, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what Disney has done. They, they've burned uh, the people who are willing to give them a chance. And now you got to do more and, uh, you know, you've got to appear like you know what you, you're doing more to get these people back. And, and it has to be, you know, and you just can't half-ass it either. Uh, you know, that's why, uh, here's, here's how Disney can save itself. Uh, it will clean house, get rid of everybody uh, in leadership, and then it'll just and then whoever is in charge, the new CEO, just needs to step up and say, uh, "We've been making serious mistakes over the last five, ten years. You know, we've not we have not put you, our customer, our guests, uh, at the forefront, and for that we apologize, and we'll do better. And by doing better, we'll do this. You know, that's that's how you save Disney." Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.